Hello, this is the Discovering Local Weather Patterns lesson plan for kindergarten. For this lesson, I used Kindergarten Earth Science, Earth Science Standard 2-1, which is to use and share observations of local weather conditions to describe patterns over time. And then I went ahead and used two uh, kindergarten math standards. One is for counting to tell the number of objects. The other is geometry. Uh, they'll be able to count clouds um, to put that to put the KCC standard into practice and then the geometry this is just kind of uh, embedded in there so they'll be working on that but kind of indeliberately and then for my lesson objective it's that the student will be able to demonstrate that he or she understands weather patterns by creating a chart of daily temperatures and writing about the significance of their chart um, the way I plan on measuring this is by having them create then after their own chart and then create their own observations and jot them down and they have to write down what the temperature feels like what the sky looks like or the day looks like um, and just write down as much observations as they can and at the end of the lesson students will be handed a paper and they will write down what their observations say about the local weather patterns so my last point is for students to practice counting and they will count clouds outside and will be asked to make connections between the number of clouds and the weather. Um, most of my type of measurement of the learning outcomes is going to be done through a lot of formative assessment, but because this lesson plan is intended to be done over the course of a week, um, the summative assessment will end up, I guess that's just going to be more uh, cumulative and that will show they will show me how much they understood about the lesson throughout the summit of assessment I didn't understand what to write for description of habits of mind so I left it blank for now but the materials are simple they're just gonna need crayons or markers thermometers and paper to jot down their observations and then to draw for this lesson, it's important for students to know what patterns, the definition of patterns, um, what what weather is, because oftentimes people confuse weather and climate. So teach them weather and then temperature. So what I will do before the class is I will discuss seasons with the students and hopefully this will get them excited to learn about weather because every student will have a different favorite season. And then as a class, we will list what we know about the weather in each season. So like winter is rainy and cold or snowy and cold and windy. Summer is generally hot and sunny. Um, so they'll just kind of make lists. And if they would, um, we can do this just, just through discussion form or they can go, um, I can draw a chart on the whiteboard and have them each like go on the whiteboard, volunteer and write on it, it however. And then lastly, I will ask students what their favorite season is and why. So they to get them kind of thinking more about weather and seasons and how much, I mean, maybe they don't realize that <laughs> what they're feeling and smelling or whatever, maybe not smelling, sorry, but what they're feeling and seeing is weather every day. It changes every day. So what we will do as a class so for modeling i will play the youtube video be a weather watcher and it's about weather and how people keep track of it and that video is kind of weird because that's basically sums up my lesson i watched it after making my lesson but it was interesting to see how someone else um, has gone about it and then together we will make a sample chart about weather conditions so the chart will be filled in throughout the day to help students understand how weather and temperature changes so that will be lesson one, um, where we'll actually not do it uh, day by day. It'll just be in the first day, we're gonna look at temperature in the morning, in the afternoon, and then, okay, so basically like twice a day, but depending on how often you wanna do it, you can always change. Um, just so they can see how weather and temperature changes, not just on a daily basis, but even throughout the day. For the guided practice, um, each day we will work on a math activity related to weather such as cloud bingo or cloud math mat and right there those are actually um, links to uh, the, 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 sorry, the printouts that you can use and they seem pretty fun and they get hopefully engage the students. 
Then we will go outside and measure the temperature with a thermometer and then have some, spend some time making observations and then go into the classroom and discuss the weather of the day. Well, as I said earlier, most of the like measuring for understanding, it will, be form, it will be formative assessment, but at the end of the lesson, it will be summative assessment. So what the students will do independently, they will be handed a worksheet with different patterns, including weather patterns and shapes. And then for the patterns, they're gonna fill in blanks for the pattern that follows the sequence. This is just to get them into the rhythm of what patterns, get them to know the rhythm of how patterns work. And then for the shapes, the students will count the number of shapes in each problem. And this is what they'll be doing outside as well because they can count the number of clouds in the sky, um, what have you. So this could actually be done as an exit ticket. And then lastly, for the assignments and the homework, so they'll just have to watch the weather forecast and locate weather patterns. And they'll probably do that with a parent because they're kid, they're kindergarten. Um, and then with a parent, they can make create a chart, write down the weather, what, what, what the weather forecast says it's gonna be like for the next week. And they have to make sure to write down the temperature because that's how they'll be jotting down numbers and realizing how numbers are integral to temperature and weather. Lastly, the students will draw a picture about their favorite weather and write a description to accompany the picture. They should include the temperature and a list of how many objects they drew. And this is just going to be kind of a way to gauge how well they're understanding not just weather but numbers as well. So this is basically the rundown of my lesson. Thank you.